Thank you very much, uh, Secretary Mavis and the US Navy, for once again inviting me to speak with you today. And I'm just sorry I'm not there with you in person. Fuels sit at the crux of our greatest global energy, security, and environmental challenges. And during a recent trip to DC, as you know, I had the pleasure of meeting with you. And we found that we are of like mind. We have a shared vision, we have a sense of urgency about ending our dependency on oil. And like the US Navy, my airlines, Virgin Galactic and the Carbon War Room are working to help catalyze the transition off of oil. And in 2008, Virgin Atlantic flew the first commercial demonstration flight on a renewable fuel plane when everybody told us that it could not be done. Well, since then, renewable jet fuel have powered several thousand flights. In only four years, two different types of renewable jet fuels have been ASTM certified for use in aeroplanes. The US military and commercial aviation are working together to test and to certify other types of advanced renewable jet fuels. Well, Virgin America and Virgin Atlantic are aiming for renewable fuels to make up 10% of their fuel supply by 2020. And obviously I want it to be 50. Virgin Atlantic is working with a company that takes steel mill emissions and converts them into fuel. Virgin Australia is working with companies and research to develop advanced renewable jet fuel supply chains in Australia. And the Virgin Green Fund and I have personally invested in leading advanced renewable fuel companies. The Carbon War Room is working with other airlines and Virgin and investors to help them understand this new marketplace, to vet renewable fuel companies and to accelerate investment in the sector. As an entrepreneur, I'm very, very familiar with the need to invest today to enable payoffs in the future, even when technology is at early stage or risky. In fact, I've found that the bigger the challenge, the higher the risk, often the greater the reward. And I cannot think of anyone who understands this better than the US military, with their long, rich history of technological breakthroughs. From technologies to take us into space, to the internet, to GPS, the US Department of Defense has brought many of the most transformational technologies of our age. Technologies are always more expensive in their early stages of development, but those costs drop rapidly as they scale up and they enter consumer markets. When the first cell phones were developed in the 1970s, they weighed two pounds and they cost around $4,000. Now they're inexpensive and mobile subscriptions went from zero to six billion in only 30 years. The first computers cost millions of dollars and took up entire rooms the initial investments that the US DOD made to develop GPS were considered too costly and funding was withheld until the Cold War concerns trumped spending concerns. Now these technologies are cheap and ubiquitous in the developed and increasingly in the developing countries of the world. These technologies underpin many of the Virgin businesses from Virgin Galactic to the Virgin Airlines to our broadband and mobile phone companies. I could not be more thrilled to be collaborating on another industry which I think will have equally transformative implications for the future, advanced renewable fuels. The Navy's work to help launch this new fuels industry is invaluable during its current nascent stage. Your efforts to test, demonstrate and scale up the production of these fuels will result in great security financial and environmental benefits in the future. I know that you're already working with Suzanne Hunt and the Carbon War Room. I applaud your leadership and I hope that our organisations can continue to work together on this inspiring, historic challenge. Thank you.